After you've installed your payroll software, you can launch it for the first time. The welcome screen invites you to license the software. You can opt to license it later if you just want to try out the software first. In this example, let's license it straight away. Enter your account details. This involves an account number and a serial number, which you get from your software supplier. The software is now licensed. This quick demonstration shows how easy it is to update license details in your payroll software. Simply select Help, View License Information. The License Details window opens. This is where all the information relating to your payroll software license is stored. To change the details, click Edit. Enter your Sage account number and the serial number if you have it. Click OK. Now click Refresh License to apply your changes. You have updated your license details. Now the Licensed Options panel shows the essential information relating to your license. It may take a short while for your licensed options to be updated. You can continue to use the software in the meantime. After you've licensed your payroll software, you need to specify some administrative settings. Log in as the admin user. The default admin password is PASS. We recommend that you set up your own administrative password. You'll see how in a moment. We recommend that you activate the RSS feed. This keeps you up to date with the latest messages from Sage about this software. Specify the software update settings that suit you. We recommend the option to download updates and install them automatically when you exit. You're logged in as the admin user. This is the user who has rights to specify system level settings. No other user has these rights. Only the admin user sees the admin screen, which is now displayed. You need to do a number of things in the admin screen to get started. First, let's set up the ordinary users who will carry out payroll processing tasks. Go to the security menu. Select Users. The Setup Users screen opens. Let's set up an ordinary user. Click Add. Enter the username they'll use to log in. Give them a user group. The group they belong to determines what features they have access to in the software. Group 1 is already created. This is for users who need access to all features in the software. Check out the help file to learn how to create and edit user groups. Now give the user a password. Notice how you could also change the admin user's password. Click OK to save the new user. When you're logged into a payroll, you can see that the main desktop has a process map containing clickable icons. This helps you to follow the correct payroll processing sequence. This section shows information about the current status of the payroll. You need to do several things to get the payroll ready for pay processing. First, let's set up the payroll's payments. Go to Company Payroll. Select Payments. You need a separate payment for each sort of income employees in this payroll receive from this employer. Let's set up Salary. In a similar way, you set up the payroll's deductions. Go to Company Payroll. Select Deductions. You need a separate deduction for each element that reduces the net pay of employees in the payroll. One example of this is Pension Deductions. See the help file for more information about deductions and pensions. If you need to set up departments and cost centers for the payroll, go to Company Payroll and select the relevant option. Now you need to set up a payroll calendar for this payroll. The calendar determines when pay periods start and when pay dates and other important payroll dates occur. Go to Company Payroll. Select Calendar. 
Open the New Calendar tab. Specify the date on which your first pay date will occur. This is the date on which employees be paid in the first pay period you process. Also select the days of the week that the system can treat as valid paydays. Click Update. Based on the information you have entered, the remaining key payroll dates in the tax year are set. If you are happy with these dates, save the calendar. The system is almost ready for you to start processing payroll. Let's create an employee to pay. Click the Employee Details button. Because you've got no employees in the payroll yet, the new employee screen opens. Enter the employee's basic details and then click Next. Now the employee record opens. Specify the necessary details on the various tabs. Some fields are mandatory. Click Save when you are done. With all the employees set up in the payroll, you're ready to set the first pay period and start processing pay. Click Set Period. Set the period number. Notice how the system takes key dates from the payroll calendar that you set up earlier. Click OK. To start processing employee pay, click Enter Time and Pay. There are various entry modes. Let's accept the default one and click Continue. The timesheet entry window opens. Let's go to the employee called Bill Carr. Let's pay him a salary amount. To preview his payslip, click Payslip. His payslip displays on screen so that you can check the details. Close the payslip to return to the timesheet entry window. When you're sure that the employee's pay details are correct, click Save. When you've saved every employee's payslip for this pay period, you are ready to end the pay period. Click End of Period. Now you can generate payroll reports for this pay period, such as the control summary and the gross to net report. To set the next pay period, simply click Set Period. Specify the new pay period number. Like before, the key dates are taken from the payroll calendar. You're now in the next pay period. You're ready to begin processing employee pay in this period.